Uh, looks like we're on. It does. And, uh, and that's a good thing. Yeah. And also a good thing is the temperatures are going up, which, which is nice, too. That's correct. You know who he is? He is Joe Rayo at, of uh, Fios One News, uh, Hudson Valley Lower. <laughs> and <laughs> growing up as a, as, a, as a child, I used to watch the big guys, Frank Field and Gordon Barnes, and this guy who was on Channel 11, Joe Chaffee. <laughs> <laughs> Fios One News. Wow. Bios One News, New Jersey, and Bios One kind. News, Long Island. Yes. Um, thank you. Well, I mean, I, I, I told you I was... I, I, was, I, I told him a couple of days, I used to be jealous of him because, you know, there were times they used to give you like five minutes on television. I had a wonderful producer, God bless Noreen Lark. Uh, she, uh, she would give me... Well, we, we had an hour show on the weekends with, uh, with not, a, not an hour's worth of news by any means... And uh, she'd have whole blocks of five minutes sometimes, and she'd come to me and she'd say, "Can you, you know, can you, can you fill?" And I'd say, "Sure, Ugh. whatever you need, Noreen." And she was great. I never had to ask her for extra time. She always, she always had plenty. And when I did ask her, she always gave it to me. She was incredibly generous, and she has so many Emmys. I don't even. I, okay. I don't know where she puts those Emmys, oh, right. you know, but uh, God bless her. So uh, glad we got our uh, crowd on tonight. Before we get going with the weather, which we'll do so shortly, I just want to tell you uh, really quick, those of you who have uh, the Android version of my weather app, thank you. Uh, there is a new update to that that uh, it came out today. So be sure to update your app because there are some new additions, including uh, Zoom Radar which uh, you can, uh, the radar will come up. You can zoom as tight as you want. You can go as wide as you want. Uh, and you'll be able to see the uh, differentiate between rain and snow and sleet and everything else. Uh, it's, a, it's a great tool. And uh, you can even put t local temperatures on it on the map. You just There's a whole bunch of buttons there on, on the side. So, if, again, if you've got the Android version, if you've got an Android phone, be sure to download the updated version of the Google app. If you have an Android phone and you don't have the Google app, the, the uh, link is on the descriptor to this live stream tonight, so go ahead and download it. I think you're going to find that uh, it's, uh, it's pretty good. And if you've got another weather app you're using, you won't have to. This one also, by the way, Joe, you get lo your local conditions. Just put your location in. It'll give you uh, local current conditions. Uh, a lot of people like icons. Well, you'll get more icons than you know what to do with. They'll be all be there, broken down hour by hour for your particular spot. And, and you can put any spot in there you want, and you'll get the forecast for you. For you, for you, for you. So uh, go ahead and download it. It's free. Uh, if you got an iPhone, uh, and I know I've been saying I'm waiting for it to the iPhone version to come out. Uh, we, I think we're really, really close with Apple. So uh, we might have it tomorrow. We might have it on Friday. But I'm thinking that you know Google gave its stamp approval to the uh, to to the update. Instantly, so there's no technical issues. So there was just a minor glitch with the Apple up the Apple version, which we fixed. And I'm hoping tomorrow I'll be able to put up a link for the uh, iPhone. Okay, so we're done. Thanks very much, by the way, again for those of you who have downloaded it. Come on, that'd be a nice way to end the week, wouldn't it? It yeah. certainly would. This has been like, this has been a six month journey. Yeah. And uh, my buddy uh, Anthony Lucidi, uh, uh, who has, I mean, he's got the patience of a saint, really. Uh, in in uh, the the stuff you got to deal with, did a great job uh, w with the app, uh, and uh, I'd recommend if you got tech work that needs to be done, he's your guy. So just private message me, and I'll send you his information. And for you sure. realize it, with Super Bowl Sunday, not this Sunday, obviously, but the, the following Sunday, that marks the pretty close to the halfway point of winter. Yeah, so it'd be nice now to have the second half of winter to have your your app available. Uh, it works for me. Apple and, uh, yeah, it would be great. <laughs> All right, so let's let's get going. we got a busy night with weather, Joe. And, you know, one of the things that you don't get to use too often uh, is the uh, severe weather map uh, <laughs> from the Storm Prediction Center in the month of January. And that's what we got. A uh, uh, slight risk of severe, uh, uh, some strong thunderstorms that moved across the Gulf states. So that kind of tells you that this front has some punch to it. And, and most of the rain... Is is moving up to our north and west, but that's going to shift 
during the early morning hours. Yeah, and uh, I noticed that uh, you've, you're mentioning the possibility of a little convection tomorrow. I I, 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 I think I think it's worth mentioning. Also, the uh, uh, I think the wind along the coast it might get gusty, but you know, you got to be a little care, careful with that because. Sometimes it doesn't mix down to the very bottom of the atmosphere. Right. I think it will because I'm already seeing sustained winds on Long Island at, uh, uh, in the last hour of uh, 20 to 25 in some places. So I think it, it probably will mix down, in which case there could be some gusts over 50. And we, there was wind advisories up for the Jersey Shore counties. They haven't put anything up for Long Island that I've seen yet, uh, but they may very well do so. I think, I th well, there's a wind advisory for the... Uh for uh, Lower Westchester, south of 287, oh, for the South Shore site, I think Long Island is... Oh, maybe they did. Wind okay, wind. you know what? They have the flood watch uh, covering, covering, covering it, wind, so the wind, uh, the, the wind advisory wouldn't go into effect until about 6 a.m. anyhow. It's 6 uh, o'clock, 6 a.m. For the, for the flood watch, uh, at least in the Lower Hudson Valley, and 9 a.m., which I presume also will go into effect for uh, Long Island as well. Right. So it's 9 to 6 for the wind advisory and 6 to 6 for the you know flood advisory. The so, There's just too many advisories. Uh, you know, yeah, you lose track. Uh, this is the uh, Philadelphia radar view here uh, with uh, uh, some showers and storms. Uh, I mean, some showers, no storms yet. But uh, let me just really quick, since, uh, since you know, we kind of should have the right information on this. Yeah. Uh, flood watches for everybody. And I'm just checking for Long Island. They did put a wind advisory up, but that doesn't go in effect until 9 a.m. Right. Uh, and they're going for 20 to 30, gusting to 50. I think that's that, that's pretty reasonable right. from, from the southeast. Although by late in that time frame, southwest. I think it's... Oh, southwest, I'm okay. sorry. Southwest, 20 to 30 miles per hour with gusts to 50. Although I think that probably by the time we get to the latter part of the day, that wind will be going around more westerly. Right, uh, right. We, we, once the cold front goes by. Right. And... I've been telling everybody, give yourself extra time for the morning commute. You've got some specific problems for the Hudson Valley because you've got snow and ice cover to deal with. Correct. Well, we it's more than just wet weather that I'm concerned about. It's the fact that if indeed we do get this big push overnight of uh, unseasonable warmth coming in, overriding, and I think uh, once you get north of 287, you begin to see snow on the side roads or snow on the grass or whatever. Certainly where I am, we, we have a, 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 still a fair amount from last weekend storm, and to get enough warm air to go override that, you're going to get patchy areas of dense, thick fog, plus the fact, as you just mentioned, the rains are probably going to be at their heaviest between about 7 a.m. and 1 p.m. 1 p.m. is about the time when, the, when we have FROPA, when the cold front actually moves through the tri-state area. And during that six-hour period, Joe, we could see... Uh, uh, the lion's share of the one to two inches of rain that is anticipated over our area. And if you get that in a short interval of time and you get some snow melt or ice melt, especially in the northern areas, you could have some uh, flooding issues tomorrow well, afternoon. Well, uh, this is another example, by the way, uh, when, when, it starts, when it starts precipitating in Vermont and New Hampshire, before it starts precipitating here, you're talking about a, a, a warm flow of air somewhere. And in fact... It's going to. This is going to be mostly rain, clear up through Maine, clear up through New Brunswick. Right. And I mean that, that's. <clears throat> it's it's odd how, but not. It, it sounds odd, but it really isn't when you think about it. We stretched the rubber band to the as far as almost as far as you can stretch it on the cold side on Monday when we had temperatures basically right. between five below and five above right. in most areas. Now in in a in less than. 60 hours time we're going to see temperatures up in the 50s and in some places in new jersey maybe even near 60. thank you keep in mind again that uh when we were down to five below to five above on monday morning we also had that stinging biting brutal blustery wind making chill factors or feels like temperatures of 15 and 20 below so if we indeed hit 50 degrees tomorrow early in the day it's going to feel out there tomorrow a good 60 or 70 degrees warmer than what we had at the start of this week. By the right. way, uh, just to, I wanted to show Joe, uh, Joe the severe weather uh, in that risk area. We've got some strong to severe thunderstorms. And uh, this video later on may get, get, may get play elsewhere around the country. So just bear in mind that what you're looking at is a radar at 9.40 p.m. Eastern Time on Wednesday. So if you're watching this on a replay overnight or even er, uh, during the day tomorrow, uh, it's... Make sure you go to your local National Weather Service uh, 
uh, office uh, website page, weather.gov, and check the latest weather conditions because that's not going to be there if you're watching right. this uh, Thursday. Uh, the uh, heavy weather is going to be up uh, in the Northeast. Uh, so uh, one of the things that, that uh, struck me, Joe, is in the overall pattern, and I, I want to uh, kind of really quick, and we've all been sort of looking at this, uh, I, I know the snow lovers are, 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 are just pretty much at their wits end. We haven't had, what is it, six, almost 70 days now since uh, well, the, the, the snowfall, in, the one inch snowfall uh, or more. You have okay. to go, never since November 15th. Yeah. And we haven't yeah. had even an inch of snow since. Right, right. Well, that was, again, that would be specifically for Central For, for New York City. That's York correct. City, right. Because you know, I had three and a half inches up. up and you've had, you've had a few pepperings of snow along the way, too. Yeah, but, you know, uh, Joe, uh, I've, been, I've been up in uh, Putnam Valley now, uh, which is just north of the Westchester border now, for 16 years. And let me tell you that uh, of those 16 years, there have been very few and far between winters, and this is one of them, where I've only managed to get uh, not even 10 inches right. by this point in the, the this time of the ball. Again, we're almost halfway through winter, and I've, I've known many a winter where we've been off to the races and had 30 and 40 by this time. So even for me, uh, it's low. to say 10 inches is, is, is like right. well below the... But we're point. in the snow hole this year. The snow hole runs from basically from Boston to uh, maybe to just north of Baltimore. Right. It does extend a bit to the west, but uh, there the areas south of there... Uh, uh, Baltimore, but uh, Washington, Baltimore, Richmond, uh, all of Virginia, northwestern North Carolina. These areas have had uh, a very snowy winter so far. So has the areas if you go maybe about halfway up the Hudson Valley on up toward I-90 in upstate right. New York and central and northern New England also have had a very snowy winter. But every year there's a snow hole someplace and we're in. Now, once this is all out of here, uh, by the way, I don't think it's a big deal, even though some of the models want to show that it might briefly change over to snow before it ends in inland areas. So I, I don't think it's anything of a it's consequence. A thrill. If, if it is, if it even happens. <laughs> so then we're going to spend the next couple of days, uh, Friday, Saturday, get, moving in the next cold air mass. And it's a pretty cold air mass that's coming in. It's not as brutal, but it's pretty cold. I, th I thought maybe on Friday, Joe, that when the Arctic boundary goes through around the middle of the day, and, and if you look on the map right now, folks, right around New York City, you can see how the isobars are kind of bent there. There's, a, right. there's an Arctic front that's going to go by. So there might be some snow showers with that or maybe even a brief heavier snow squall uh, when that happens. The weekend on the whole looks basically dry. There's another boundary that's going to try to come through here uh, for... Uh, at some point on Sunday. Might some, be a few flakes. Maybe. Yeah. And then it looks like the next low dropping out of the northern plains wants to go up across the lakes. Now, one thing I will just point out, uh, there, I, I think uh, you know, the models have been kind of going all over the place with this system that comes out of the Gulf and runs offshore. Uh, the flow is split. You've got this cold air, the, the flow in the cold air, which is bringing that northern low down, and then the southern low is in its own stream. Right. I, I think the door if it, it is left maybe just a crack open that this could still wind up turning a little more to the north, but it would have to turn in a big way to be have impact. Assuming <coughs> that doesn't happen, this front goes by. I really don't care that the model is showing snow here for Wednesday because it won't be even there on the next run as far as I'm concerned. It might or it might not, but it doesn't matter. I think the important thing is this air mass that's dropping down behind this particular system on Tuesday is brutal. I mean, this is really going to be, uh, if this verifies, Joe, it's going to be one of the colder air masses we've seen in years because this is the polar vortex literally dropping down right. into the western lakes. Right. You don't see that too often. Right. Um, well, you know, we... Joe, when we were talking about stratospheric warming and about how the uh, the polar vortex near the pole was splitting into three, uh, not splitting, but dividing into three separate entities, and we were discussing, you know, okay, now this is happening, how long is it going to take? And we were speculating and saying, well, it may not, it's not going to happen immediately, but we were leaning toward the end of this month or the beginning of February. Well, looky what we've got. This as is... We're in the final days of January, and finally... All that frigidity is spilling southward and is covering, as you can see there, 
much of the uh, northern plains, the Great Lakes, and eventually we're going to get clipped by it too. Yeah, I the core of the co if this verifies, um, and we, you know it's not often that you see models dropping a vortex down into the western lakes. But let me just point something out to everybody, because this is I wrote about this today on my website, which immediately got completely misinterpreted, because apparently a lot of people don't exactly read the post. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But the, let's just lay that minor technical glitch aside. Uh, I pointed out for you snow lovers that are watching, this to me is is probably the most. Um, tragic situation in the sense that you know snow lovers are always have to look for that elusive combination of cold and moisture at the same time. Well, um, this this could very well be another situation where you're going to have all this cold air all over the place, like we had on Monday. Okay, all this cold air, and then moisture comes just two days later, and it warms up and rains, and you don't see a flake or an ice pellet. Well, uh, when you have a pattern like this where the trough is so broad, I mean, it basically goes from coast to coast. You've got, uh, it, it's it's not as sharp at all. It's just like this giant bowling ball that's dropped <coughs> down. You can't get anything out of it. It's cold and dry. Too and it's circular. Bitter. Yes, and too, too circular. Too concentric, if you will. This is, none... this is a situation when you could be too, you're too deep into the cold air. Right. And, especially upstairs. And this is, this is, uh, it's going to be, uh, do you think that we'll be uh, seeing, well, you mentioned to me that Chicago probably will be in double digits below zero. Oh, Fahrenheit. yeah, take a look at this, Joe. I mean, uh, I pulled up the map from the Northern Plains. Uh, and, I mean, it, it's just crazy. Uh, what, what, uh, here's the zero line. This is, let me back this up. So there's your freezing line, which is long, you know, gone. So this is Tuesday. So here we are at Wednesday morning. So there's zero minus five minus ten. So minus ten is through Chicago. Right. Minus thirty five is into southeastern Minnesota, and that circle there in North Dakota that's minus forty. Right. Now starting. It doesn't matter whether or not it's Celsius or Fahrenheit by that point. Right. This actually will look better if we use the the shaded. This term. is this is the kind this is the kind of weather. Now you realize look why. Look at this. This is insane. This is this is why places out in Minnesota and the Dakotas, for example. When you park your car, you sometimes have to, in the street, you have to plug, plug it them in. in in order not to crack the engine block because it's so frigid. Well, they're and looking at minus, minus uh, the prints up uh, in North Dakota, minus 41, minus 41, minus 40. Right. That's, uh, that's all in Fahrenheit. That's the actual temperature. Now, Wednesday morning, the Chicago print there, I don't know if that's exactly Chicago or just south of Chicago, minus 22. All right, Ooh. and the temperature at one o'clock in the afternoon minus twenty one. At <laughs> at uh, you think they're overdoing it just a little bit though? Seventeen. I mean, well, if that whole vortex comes down, yeah. you know, maybe not. Uh, minus nineteen, and this is from a model that has been too warm. Yeah. You know, <laughs> mi mi minus nineteen. You had to mention that, right? By the way, I also I looked at the European temperatures because the European is actually taking the vortex. A little further south than the GFS, right. and its numbers were every bit as cold as this. But now we're into. We went through Wednesday. We're into Thursday morning. Chicago minus two, twenty-two. Minneapolis minus thirty-five. Uh, Thursday afternoon minus thirteen, minus fourteen. Thursday night minus thirteen. Friday morning, and finally six above zero. Friday afternoon. So basically below zero from we're late Tuesday about night. So for the people who just tuned in, this is a week from this Friday. Right. This is not this Friday. It's the following Friday. Now, here's 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 the implications for us. That that vortex drops down over Wisconsin and then kind of moves east. It doesn't, you know, drop into the northeast. Right. So we're going to get cold, and we're going to get very cold. Uh, single digits, uh, if this if this is correct, the magnitude of this air mass, is, 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 you know, it's it's pretty strong. Uh, but we're, we're not going to get into that super cold. That super cold kind of stays up in the northern plains, uh, the Great Lakes, and then moves into southeastern Canada. But right. you can't help but bleed down single digits to near zero readings uh, for, uh, down into Virginia and, uh, and even uh, down into uh, the mountains of North Carolina, down into Tennessee, northern Alabama, northern Georgia. You're probably going to see temperatures down in the teens and maybe even in the low teens. What about people who are asking about their friends in the sixth borough, Miami? 
Uh, well, it smarter. seems as if if the whole trough doesn't really plunge all the way down, uh, it would the cold air will kind it, of shear off to the north, and and uh, it looks like it maybe gets into north central Florida, but south Florida not so much. Mm -hmm. uh, some of that's going to bleed down. I mean, they're going to probably have days where temperatures down in South Florida won't get much above the low or mid 60s, if this is correct. But uh, in terms of the 32 degree line, uh, it looks like it gets into northern Florida, and maybe it'll be a little further south than right. this because it always likes to bleed further south. Right. But it doesn't look like it'll be a push all the way south. Right. But this is some air mass if it winds up verifying. It's, it's, it is. It's, uh, and a lot of people are going to be, uh, I think it's going to cross the minds of more than a few by late next week. Um, you know, George, didn't they say at the beginning of the winter, or in the back in the fall, they said this was going to be a milder than normal winter for us? Didn't right. they say something like and, that? And it also, as a reminder to um, <clears throat> to uh, snow lovers, and, and in terms of you know how, you're, how you observe the kind of winter we've had, remember, and I, Joe, you've heard me say this, many times and i'll say it again uh the pattern uh the, the pattern change you want and the pattern change you get are not necessarily the same thing right yet all these big events in the atmosphere and that's all fine and dandy and in the broad sense you know we had a really monumental pattern shift that's now bringing down these cold air masses and we are participating in them but at the end of the day if the trough is not in the right spot and right now, it's not. It's it needs to be along 80 West. It's accessed along 90 West. Right. That's great for Chicago for snow lovers. Uh, Chicago, Milwaukee, uh, you know, all those St. Louis. So depending on the setup, Detroit and Cleveland. It's not good for the coastal cities. That just means that every system goes to your west, and you'll be cold for a few days. The cold air pulls out and you warm up in rain, and then you get really cold again. Right. you got to have that trough much further to the east. And I saw, Joe, uh, you were talking about the uh, the very cold air coming down with one vortex, and then you had that offshore coastal system, which a few days ago we had a teleconnection, so to speak, and we had this dramatic, dynamic storm system that was, on some of the longer-range models, suggesting... Mm -hmm. a big snowfall for the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast. And I actually saw on a few Facebook pages and a few websites, they're saying, hey, look at this! Yeah. This is the, well, the big... And I said, haven't you learned after what we've just gone through this I, I just want... That, but I did... I, I just want to leave the door open a crack because those teleconnections are still kind of there. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, one of the things that's going on is that the flows... The, the jet stream is so broad right now that the northern energy and the southern energy are kind of floating in their own own worlds. It's right. almost like the flow is split. And there's something the, the split extends out into the Atlantic. I think there's I mean it's a small chance. I think there's a small chance that you could that 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 coat that could wind up not wiping okay. itself out sure. and and you could get the low maybe a little bit more tucked in. It would have to be a lot tucked in in order for it to have the hey, kind of the uh, impact that the, some of the models were showing. A we're few days six ago. days away. A lot can still happen in yeah. six days. And in fact, you we we've often said you know sometimes you see a specific uh, weather pattern, you know five six days out, then all of a sudden it disappears, and then, and then all of a sudden it, it comes back yes. a day or two before yeah. the event. So it still could happen, snow lovers. But what 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 really gets me angry is when you throw out a, a map with no and we say yeah with no context you know yeah, that's it, that's nonsense that's yeah. nonsense you have to give it context it doesn't mean anything you know uh, fo you just you they, folks that do that actually you know what Joe seriously they do they do you and I a big favor because we don't do that sort of thing right. or if we do put up a map we explain what the context is right. so when they when 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 folks see them on other places I always get then follow-up immediate questions. Hey, I saw this on another site uh, or on another page. What's the story? And we can set them straight. So ultimately, they they are functioning as a uh, catalyst for driving the audience to our channel. Right. Well, <laughs> it's a, it would have to be an extraordinarily unusual event. And I, I will say, I, I, I've done it before, but it's been, it was a long time ago, with Sandy. You remember uh, the European, like six days in advance, was curving Sandy toward the Jersey coast. I actually showed that on right. on the air, and I actually said, "Well, if this happens, we're in big, big trouble." 
knowing, of course, that I said in my mind, well, it's not going to happen. You know, and six days after, and guess what? And it guess happened. what it did. So, but I, it, that was like one of the rare times when I've ever done that. But uh, yeah, well, we'll but it was it was worth doing considering you know what it wound up being exactly. for sure. Exactly. All right, we got to go, folks. So just to get a quick reminder, if you if you've got my uh, excuse me, if you have an Android device and you downloaded my app from Google Play. There's a new updated version of the app. I put the link up. It's on the description of this live stream. If you don't have the uh, Google the uh, Weather app, which is free, uh, and you do have an Android device, why haven't you downloaded it? It's free. There's a lot of new stuff on there. Zoom radar, local weather conditions, local forecasts, you name it, it's on there. So uh, go ahead and get it. Maybe tomorrow or Friday we'll have the iPhone version out for everybody. Joe's going to be on uh, Hudson F Fios One News Lower Hudson Valley coming up at the top of the hour. Joe's going to be on the uh, Fios One News Long Island or Long Island, and, and also New Jersey. That's right. And uh, we got to go because Ivan's going to start yelling at me. <laughs> have, have a have a great evening, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Stay dry. <laughs>